there and welcome to this tutorial on setting up the new version of Photoshop Elements, Photoshop Elements version 11. Now for those of you who've been using previous versions of Photoshop Elements, you're going to open this thing and feel like you've gone to a different planet. And it does kind of feel like that. In fact, I had to go to the help to figure out how to set up a couple of the things that I'm going to show you right now, which hasn't happened for years. But I'm going to guide you through how to set this up so that you can take my classes at jessicasprague.com or you can set this up to be able to continue in the best way possible, the most seamless way possible in your work if you're graduating or, m or migrating or upgrading to Photoshop Elements 11. So when you get to the splash screen, you're going to click Edit Photos, and then you're going to be taken into this this screen right here, which of course right away you'll notice that it's light gray around the edges here, and you'll be dropped on this Quick Edit button. We want to go over to Expert, which is going to enable us to see really what's the fuller version of Photoshop Elements and the one that will look a little bit more familiar to us. So we're going to click on Expert. You can see that we have a two-column toolbar here, which you can't change, as well as a panel over here and you'll notice that that doesn't say layers on it, and there's a reason for that. Down here in the bottom of this brand new bar, we have a bunch of different options here, and I'll go through each of the sort of most important ones, but you'll notice that the layers palette is actually triggered right down here. And then effects, which is our drop shadows and, and bevel and that kind of thing, are, are here in effects, and you'll notice if I click on that, it replaces the layers palette kind of annoying, so I'm going to show you how to fix that. Graphics are these terrible, awful backgrounds that they've included in every version of Photoshop Elements for a long time, and I think that they imagine that we would want to use, you know, leopard skin someplace in our layouts, or this terrible balloon thing, or barbed wire. So that's all I'm going to say about that. We're going to get rid of that as soon as we can. So what we're going to do first is switch into a different mode, and then I'll go through kind of the tools and the different locations of everything, and, and really we'll sort of be able to set this up and kind of get our heads around what's going on here. So the first thing that we want to do in order to be able to pull out the layers palette so that it's always visible, that's a critical thing for us when we're working, whether it's digital scrapbooking or hybrid scrapbooking, or really making any kind of graphics that don't involve, what's this one, animal fur pink. We're going to come down to this little more button and click on the little drop down that's next to it, that little gray piece. And it's going to give us several options here. There's actions. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But let's come to custom workspace. So for some reason, they've got a workspace that they call basic, and there's no other way to get to it except for this more button. That was the part that really confused me. So once we switch into our custom workspace, then we can begin moving stuff around, which is going to be really helpful. Now, if you're like me and you've got a widescreen monitor, a couple of things are going to come into play here. The first thing we want to do is pop out this little graphics palette here and just toss that thing away. Just close it. Um, we also want to pop out our favorites right here, which really just sort of gathers up some of the most commonly used items here. Most of the time I find myself sort of hand making these things or doing these through the filters and styles, you know, the effects palette here. If you'd like to keep out the favorites, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and close that. The last two that we have here are layers and effects, and obviously we don't really want to be switching these out. So one of the things that we can do is actually pop out our effects palette. This is the way we get our drop shadows, of course, and it's the way that we can run some of the filters if you rather not use the filters that are in this menu item right up here. Let's go ahead and keep it just for humor's sake. What we're going to do is pull this down, and you can see that little blue bar that appears right down here at the bottom of the layers palette. So you can actually dock that in and it becomes pretty similar to what we saw in the palette bin in the previous versions of Photoshop Elements. The other couple that I want to make sure that we get out are our adjustments palette. You'll notice that there aren't really, you can add an adjustment right here, 
but it's going to pop out a little palette for you. So let's go ahead and put our adjustments palette in here. We're going to come up to Window and Adjustments, and that's going to show up maybe way over here. And we're going to put that one right here above Effects. Now you can actually group these together so you could see Adjustments and Effects if you wanted to do that. You can kind of collapse things together. But if it's more familiar to you, go ahead and just just kind of stack them on top of each other. And then whenever you click on one of the tabs, it'll go ahead and collapse those, showing you your whole layers palette. That's pretty nice. The last one, and really this is the big news as far as this version of Photoshop Elements, the big news here is that you can actually install actions from the Photoshop Elements interface. So we just come up to Window and Actions. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Now this one's actually grouped with a bunch of different things here, most of which I don't really use. Info, Navigator, we're going to turn on our zoom with scroll wheel so we don't need that. History is pretty useful, but again in Photoshop Elements you can Control Z or Command Z back as many times as you need to. That hasn't changed. Histogram is useful if you're going to be doing photo editing, and I never use color swatches. So we'll just pop out this little Actions tab here and close the rest of these. Of course, they're always available to you. Now they've actually gone and added in some actions already waiting for us. I'm a little offended by this lose weight one right here, but if if digital surgery on a photograph is, is the way you want to roll, They've already created actions for you, and you can decide how much thinner you want to make yourself. Now, you can't record new actions in Photoshop Elements, but if you come and click on this little menu button here, you can actually see that you can load actions, which is very cool. This is pretty revolutionary, and I'm very excited about it. This right here is almost worth the hassle of the upgrade and getting everything reset again. So we're going to go ahead and pop actions into our little panel here. And the easiest way to keep things kind of organized is just by double clicking on each of these tab titles to collapse them. Great. I wanted to show you one more thing over here in the layers palette. Now I was kind of hoping that they would borrow from the full version of Photoshop and give us a little secondary dock here. Well they have. And it's cool and worth taking a look at, but in the secondary dock in the full version of Photoshop, it just collapses to little icons. So you, you only waste, you know, half an inch of screen real estate, where with this one, they allow us to double dock, but all of your palettes are full size. Again, if you're running a full widescreen monitor, this still may be worth a look. You've got a little space to play with. So what I have done is actually pop out my layers palette here, let all the rest of these kind of open and close as they will, and then I'm going to pull my layers palette. Now watch, watch where I drop it, you're going to grab onto the tab, and then as you pull the tab right over next to that first palette bin, you can see the blue line highlights, and when you drop that in, it stacks them right next to each other. I think this is a pretty critical piece that isn't necessarily really obvious because I'm always dealing with the layers palette and I really don't ever want that to be anything but right out here in the middle of stuff so I can be interacting with the different layers of my document. You'll also have noticed that all of our buttons have migrated from the bottom of the layer stack back to the top of the layer stack. A little harken back to version 5 and I believe version 6 before we migrated down to the bottom. And so we've got our basic setup. So now let's go through a few of the things that you're going to need to add in or kind of rediscover as we go through this. The first one is that you want to make sure that your layout right down here, if you click on that little pop-up, you want it to say default because what that's going to do is give you the little tabbed interface so that your documents stack one on top of each other and you get the whole space to work with here. Project bin is exactly the same. They call it photo bin now, but there's one major change to this item down here, and I'll show you. Let's go ahead and open up a document. If you click this open button, it makes it really handy. You can actually open one of your previous documents, or you can create a new blank file from right here. So rather than going up to file, new blank file, you can go to open and new blank file. A little bit handier. 
So let's go ahead and open one of these documents and I can show you a couple of the changes as far as the interface goes. So I've got a layout open here and I'm going to click on the Move tool, which is right over here. And this is going to enable me, of course, to move things around. Now the biggest thing that I'm sure you just noticed, and maybe you gasped out loud, I know I did, is that our options bar has now moved to the options bin, which is right down here, and basically replaces our photo bin. So this isn't always visible now. It's a little disconcerting at first, and it's going to be pretty weird having to switch back and forth when you're building a layout and, and trying to move things around and then coming back to some of the options for the tools. It's going to disappear, but just know that you can come back to it with the photo bin button right here. And let's take a look at some of these tool options. So back to the Move tool. We've got all the same stuff here as far as the Move tool is concerned. By default, it's got Auto Select Layer and Show Bounding Box checked, which is very nice. I always turn off the Show Highlight on Rollover because those blue bars all over the place, you know, with this on, it's going to say, oh, you want this, you want this, you want this, and, and it just kills me. So I always turn that thing off. The other real major change here that was a little bit disconcerting to me is when you click on your Brush Tool. Okay, so now comes the part that is really important about brushes. They have made a change here that that when I tried it without knowing that they had made the change, it made me cry a little um, because I screwed it up and I can't go back because that's just the way brushes are. So what we need to do here is to load brushes, we need to come to the brush selection tool, which is this little invisible button right here that is even more invisible in this version of Photoshop and then we need to click on this little drop down and we need to choose the preset manager remember that in Photoshop Elements you can't add multiple sets of brushes into a list you have to actually come into the preset manager to be able to add those brushes to the end of the brush list now here is the bad part if you click the add button right here it will act just like clicking the load brushes button right down here meaning that if you click add pick a brush set and click OK it's actually going to replace all the brushes that you have so carefully and lovingly installed into a stack here in your brush list so so imagine this button completely gone because it will do us no good and it'll make us cry a little if we have clicked on it by accident so you always want to click on this append button right here the append button basically means to stick something at the end of your list so we always want to click append then we're going to navigate to wherever we want to install our brush and we'll we'll just pick one here's one we'll click load and that will come in right down here at the bottom of the brush list that's the only way to get brushes to install multiple brushes at once and to keep them there so remember do not click add do not okay so we'll click done here do not switch away from your default brushes here because it'll just reset everything and also do not use the load brushes command right here otherwise you will be sad the other little thing that we need to do of course we had to do this in the previous versions um, is to come up to edit and preferences and general and make sure yet again this is not checked by default and it kills me you want to check zoom with scroll wheel right here and that will enable you to zoom in and out get this wait for it with your scroll wheel that's actually one of the well the only way that I actually navigate in my layout itself is to zoom in and out with my scroll wheel I still think Photoshop Elements is a wonderful and powerful tool that comes to us at a good price, which is really the best of all the worlds. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial of the new changes and the setup for Photoshop Elements 11. I'm Jessica Sprague. Visit me at jessicasprague.com. I'll see you soon.